today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. For those looking to cruise in style and enter the offshore fishing arena, we'll be taking a look at the Scout 215 XSF, a center console with an overall length of 21 feet 6 inches, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and max horsepower rating of 250. Standout features on the Scout 215 XSF, an open cockpit that is clear of obstructions and has plenty of room to move around comfortably makes sharing angling space with friends much more enjoyable. A functional helm layout puts the controls and switches at the captain's fingertips, easy to access and see while operating the vessel. Lounge-style bow seating that can accommodate multiple guests is greatly appreciated when bringing along the family, plus it doubles as additional storage space. If fishing versatility is a must without sacrificing rough water performance, we'll be looking at the Glassstream 260 TE, a bay boat with an overall length of 26 feet 10 inches, a beam of 8 feet 3 inches, and max horsepower rating of 350. Standout features on the Glassstream 260 TE. A versatile hull design combines topside layout and low profile of a bay boat with the sharp entry of a traditional center console, providing functionality inshore and a soft ride offshore. Recessed casting decks give anglers a height advantage for spotting fish, but are low enough to provide a sense of security, especially when offshore. Easy console access provides quick and easy entry to items that have been stowed away out of the elements. For the blue water fisherman who wants to hang with the sport fish fleet on rough days, but on a smaller, more manageable platform, we'll be taking a look at the Buddy Davis 34cc, a center console with an overall length of 34 feet, a beam of 10 feet 6 inches, and max horsepower rating of 900. Standout features on the Buddy Davis 34cc. A large bow flare, especially on a boat with a narrow front entry, helps to provide lift when in rough water conditions, in turn keeping the bow high and anglers dry. A live well system that uses rugged high flow pumps to keep a constant supply of water to baits is a must have if you plan on heavily live bait fishing offshore. Easy system access means the captain and crew can quickly inspect and, if necessary, repair vital system components while on the water or easily service them at the dock. Join our hosts George Labonte and Rick Riles as they conduct walkthroughs and review key features, all to help you decide if this is the best boat for you. Welcome to another episode of Florida Sports and Best Boat. I'm Captain Rick Riles. And I'm Florida Sportsman Boating Editor, George Labonte. Rick, we've got three great boats to look at this week. Woo! I'll say we do. We're going to start with the Scout 215 XSF. We're going to look at the Glassstream 260 TE and then on to the 34 Buddy Davis. All three really unique boats. Let's start with the Scout, the 215 Scout. You know, that boat really turned a lot of heads at the dock. One of the standouts on this boat is it's really a very stylish boat that's a fishing boat, but it combines a lot of luxury, some great upholstery seating, kind of family-friendly fishing boat. I tell you, George, every boat has evolved in every size class. Man of 21-foot center console has ever evolved. I am really looking forward to a ride on that Scout. Yeah, but how about the Glassstream? Now, that 260 Glassstream, that is a racy, that's actually a race-inspired hull anyways, but that ventilated step hull, super fast, really peppy, just a great sporty boat, but a bay boat style, offshore and inshore fishing boat. Really neat little boat. Well, when you start out doing 60 miles an hour tied to the dock, you can really get pretty fast pretty quick, but I gotta tell you, that Buddy Davis speaks to me. If there ever was a boat that takes the center console into the sport fishing world, I can't wait to be on that one. Yeah, that's a great boat. I mean, a lot of heritage there. Really, all three boats are great. It's going to be a great episode. Why don't we get the show started? When we come back, hosts George Labonte and Rick Riles take a closer look at a boat made to accommodate the offshore fisherman and his family, the Scout 215 XSF. This segment brought to you by Evan Rood, the outboards that are changing everything. The future of boating is here. Now get all the efficient performance of an Evinrude E-Tech G2 in the new 150, 175, and 200 horsepower. Fuel economy is everything. I was really shocked how fuel efficient it is. Anywhere from 40 to 50 miles further on a tank of fuel. All day on the water. I told my wife, I said, you know, I can't think of the last time I filled up. It's more money in the bank for me. The best in class fuel economy of the Evinrude E-Tech G2 is now available from 150 to 300 horsepower. To learn more, visit evinrude.com. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat, 
Join our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles, as they take a closer look at the Scout 215 XSF. Representing the 20 to 26 foot class in the center console category, the Scout 215 XSF has an overall length of 21 feet 6 inches, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 250. Built for taming oceanic waters, she has a draft of 15.75 inches, a dead rise of 20 degrees, a dry weight of 2,776 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 82 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles. Okay, Rick, we're on the Scout 215 XSF. Now, this boat has accomplished something that's really useful when you're trying to sell a boat. What happened last night when we walked down the dock and there was a couple standing here staring at this boat? That was fascinating to me because we see boats all the time, but we don't see it from the consumer's point of view. And we got to do that last night. But one thing this boat is that, that you know going in, Scout is one of the few companies that has built a distinctive look that the minute you see it, you know it's a Scout. And they knew what it was as soon as they walked up to it too. This boat appeals to both halves here. The wife loved the front, the husband loved the back, it's all business back there and all pleasure up here sitting around. They were really excited about looking at the boat. George, it only makes sense that you and I would start back here. We fishermen by nature, but you really got a pretty serious area back here to fish from. Absolutely, this is a business end of the boat, Rick. I mean, this boat we've talked about, it's split up between two different uses, but back here is where the magic happens. And it's a 21 foot boat, but there's plenty of room here to fish. If you're gonna set up and go offshore and go trolling, you can do it right here. Some people also wanna put a live bait in the water every now and then. You do have a live well right here in the corner. Okay, if you like to jump out of the boat, you wanna swim, you wanna go snorkeling or whatever, there's a pass through right here, integrated swim platform with a ladder right there so you can get in and out of the boat real easy. Also in the back here too, I mean underneath that cooler's right there, but you've got some drink holders here. We've also got a couple of drink holders back here too. This seat flips up too, if you're not fishing, you put that seat up and sit right here and you've got a drink holder right in front of you. And you and I both know that's the most comfortable place on the boat to ride if it's choppy When it's all. choppy, absolutely, and that's where I'm gonna be. I'm usually relegated to the wheel, but yeah, that's where I'd rather be. They've thought out the, the cockpit of this boat very, very well. Certainly not unusual for Scout. George, come over to the console a minute. There's something I wanna show you that I had to learn the hard way. Well, Scout put the switches up here in the center of the console. Not only do you not bump them on accidentally, but you can see each one right there. So reach right for the one you want. You can see it and they also feature an indicator light to let you know any of these features are turned on too, which is very helpful. You know what else, Rick? Seating has come a long way on these things. This leaning post option, you see a lot of it now and this is very comfortable. This seat, you can sit up against it, standing up driving, or you can flip these down if you're just kind of lounging around and sit on it and it's very comfortable for two. Also, one guy might want to be standing, the other one seated, so they're independently. Georgia 21 foot boat, you so often fight the battle of storage. But behind this door, you can put a potty in there, you still got plenty of room to store everything you want to take. All right, step up front a minute. Let me take you into my living room. Okay. <laughs> How nice is this? It's pretty comfy looking. This boat is set up to bring people up here and actually sit out and socialize and enjoy the sunshine, you know, go to the sandbar right here. I mean, you can seat several people up there and have a conversation while the fishing's still going on in the back. This is a boat for Saturday. You understand what I'm saying? That's the kids are out of school. Yep. The wife's got the day off. Okay, let's take the family out now. Honey, I want to stop on this tide and we're going to check these snook. And then we'll take the kids wakeboarding and skiing and whatever. Tube and whatever. Right. Yeah. yeah, bring your mom along. We got sure. plenty of room for her to sit up here. It, this boat screams family at you. It sure does, Rick. George, I tell you what, it's oftentimes a problem on a 21 foot boat finding a place to put a big fish, okay? I don't know that I've caught too many individual big fish you couldn't fit in this big box up here. Rick, you may not be fishing one day and you need a place to store a bunch of things and this box is also a great place to store you name it, all kinds of items you could put away in this box. Well, what it means is you don't have to tell your kids pick one water toy to take with you. Great you know, point. you can pile a bunch of them in here. George, you don't need a separate tow vehicle. It's easy to tow, it's easy to launch by yourself. It's 21 feet long, but it's 21 feet of scout. You understand what I mean by I that? I do, absolutely. So if you, maybe you don't know which brands are better, which brands, scout is one of those brands, and there's a few of them that has been around so long and the reputation is so good, it's an excellent place to start. You know you're getting a solid value. When we return, host George Labonte and Rick Ryle step aboard a boat designed to handle inshore and offshore waters with ease, the Glassstream 260 TE. 
This segment brought to you by Suzuki Marine, the ultimate four-stroke outboard. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles, as they take a closer look at the Glassstream 260 TE. Representing the 25 to 28 foot class in the bay boat category, the Glassstream 260 TE has an overall length of 26 feet 10 inches, a beam of 8 feet 3 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 350. Designed with maximum inshore and offshore capability in mind, she has a draft of 15 inches a dead rise of 20 degrees, a dry weight of 3,450 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 92 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles. George, we're here on the Glassstream 260 TE. This boat is a lot of different boats all at the same time. You're exactly right, Rick. You know, I was standing here looking at this thing and I'm trying to decide, is this an offshore center console or is it a bay boat? It I'll really, listen, it really has a lot of elements of both. It does. I was totally convinced it was a bay boat until I watched it running offshore yeah. and got on it running offshore. It really rides nice. You know, this boat really looks like a center console when you look at it, but now standing in the boat, you know, fish-wise, it's really set up like a bay boat. It is, and one of the advantages that so many center console owners overlook about bay boats is windage. This boat has a low profile which means you can bring that 25 foot, 26 foot center console inshore to fish if you want to, but you're not gonna be as effective as you are if you're lower to the water. She's got a big double step to her, which makes her go faster on less fuel, as we know. But not only that, everything about her just says quick. And it's quick, Don't, I mean, this is a 60 mile an hour boat. Look at the boat, it looks like a racing boat, but there's a lot of fishability in this boat. Let's take a look at some of the features on it. Up here, George, it says it's a bay boat. Yeah, I mean, look at this fishing space right here, okay? This is eight and a half feet wide. You know, this boat looks really narrow, but it's 26 by eight and a half feet wide. There's a ton of room to fish up here. This is a casting platform that you're gonna find on a bay boat. Let me tell you what else I like about this casting platform. It's not all the way to gunnel height. It's not easy just to step off the side of the boat. Absolutely, I mean, it's completely walkable up here. Now, there's a live bay well here. There's two live wells on this boat, but there's a live well here. You've got storage on both sides there. You've got a nice big insulated fish box under your feet right there in the center of the deck. There you go, George. Think about it. This up here screams bay boat, whereas this big fish box in the deck screams that it's an offshore boat. Yeah, absolutely. You could be anchored up out there, you know, on the reef catching snappers and groupers, and you got somewhere to keep and cold right up there. I mean, it's really all perfect here. You want to move to the back of the boat and have a look around? Let's look. Let me show you my favorite console access. When the whole front of the console comes up, Everything becomes more accessible. You are so much more apt to maintain stuff if you can get to it easily. Absolutely, now look at, there's a lot of storage in there, but that storage actually goes underneath here too. This whole deck right here is covering the front part of that storage. You can put a bunch of things down inside there. Stuff that you may not have to get to every day, but if you need to get to something in a hurry. Like a life jacket? Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. This front access storage door is the only way to go. Very cool. George, step back here, and you know what? You get just about midships in this boat, and it turns into a center console. Exactly, Rick. I really feel like I'm in an offshore center console here. I mean, T-top, rocket launcher, leaning post here, storage in there. This really is set up like an offshore boat. I mean, even the helm here, you. It feels like we're going offshore to go dolphin fishing. It's right? designed around your Simrad unit. Look how perfect it fits in there. But it, I gotta tell you, the ride is what got me offshore because it looked to me like it was gonna be a little light, a little tender. It was not a bit. It rode like a champ. And George, just as soon as you step back here, presto change -o. We're back on a bay boat. Yeah, exactly right. I like this platform, but what might be more important than that is a seating for the whole family across the transom. Yeah, nice wide bench seat, removable backrest, but like you said here, we're back on it. I mean, I'm, forget about dolphin fishing offshore, I'm flipping to a snook in the mangroves right here. Now. Exactly, right, and you can do it all from this boat. You were just talking about flipping for snook. 
one of my big annoyances is if the angler up there has to come back here to get a bait or the angler back here has to go up there to get a bait. You got both covered with live wells at both ends of the boat. Yeah, there's one right here. You got a couple more storage boxes. You've got great access to your systems here. I mean, there's a lot of features here. There's a swim ladder. Like you said, the power pole. This is all bay boat business back here. I mean, this is really a total package. So if you need a boat to flip for snook on Saturday and catch dolphin on Sunday, you may very well want to look at the Glassstream 260 TE. When we come back, host George Labonte and Rick Riles check out a boat targeted to tackle rough water and big pelagics, the Buddy Davis 34cc. This segment brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. At Yamaha, reliability is a family tradition. Meet the next generation. Four new advanced technology-inspired inline four-cylinder performers. Bred from the reliability and boater satisfaction that is part of Yamaha's DNA, they prove that when power gets lighter, faster, stronger, and smarter, boating gets even better and more satisfying for boaters like you. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our host, Rick Riles, as he meets with Clint Saunders from Suzuki Marine to discuss how to choose a propeller for your boat in this week's power segment. We're here at Palm City Yachts in Stewart, Florida with Suzuki's own Clint Saunders. Clint, I tell you what, you have taught me a ton about props. Just because a prop on your new boat makes your boat go fast, that's not all there is to it, is it? Well, that's right, Rick. You really need to determine the prop you need by how the consumer's gonna use his boat and how much weight he's gonna put in the boat, where he's gonna go fishing, and what performance he wants out of the boat. Does he want a faster hole shot? Does he want more top speed? It's all gonna determine the pitch prop. So you've already determined what boat you want. You know, obviously, the Suzuki's the power choice you want, but it's gonna be up to your Suzuki dealer to dial in your prop to your boat and your needs. It's almost a custom choice. That's correct, Rick, and your dealer's gonna, the Suzuki dealer is gonna know that boat because he sells that boat, he's the expert, so he should be the guy that determines how his customer's gonna use the boat and what propeller he's gonna need. So you're saying Suzuki doesn't just make the best motors, they make the best props too. Exactly. Now, let's check out the Buddy Davis 34. Representing the 31 to 53 foot class in the center console category, the Buddy Davis 34 has an overall length of 34 feet, a beam of 10 feet 6 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 900. Built to handle the high seas, she has a draft of 23 inches, a dead rise of 24.5 degrees, a weight of 10,000 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 300 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles. Rick, we're on a 34-foot Buddy Davis center console today. Tell me what you think about when you think of the name Buddy Davis. Iconic. Big yep. sport fish boats. Great built Carolina style boats. First thing you think about is that bow flare. The big flare, the high bow with a broken shear line, and then coming down flat back here where you can get to the water real easy. This is a classic signature look of a big sport fish boat, but in this smaller size package and without boards too. Boy, when you can make 50, 60 miles an hour, do you know what that does for your range? Think about how you make a day trip over the Bahamas and back. It used to be a major excursion for us. Absolutely, Rick. 100% agree with you. Let's take a look at the cockpit, shall we? Rick, take a look at the size of this cockpit. I mean, there's so much room to work in this little space right here. I mean, it's really, really open. Twin 45-gallon live wells. What's unique about this live well setup? We are just talking about it. They're each 2,500-gallon hooker pumps. That will blow some water through your baits. Now, it may not be as important with sardines and cigar minnows, but boy, you get into little bullet bonita or, or big blue runners or something, it can make a lot of difference the flow that's going through that live well. Another thing I like, Rick, you've got a great big hatch with really good access to your systems down below. All your fuel filter water separators, pumps, everything is right there, and it's a big enough opening. It's not like you're working through a little hole in the deck, but more importantly, I could put my feet down there, I can get in there and work on stuff without feeling claustrophobic. And boy, am I learning a lot about that as I get older. I can't, <laughs> I can't wiggle into the spaces I used oh, to be Nora, able to. Me neither, I'm telling you. But let me tell you something. I've always kind of felt like the bigger the fish box, the better. You can't have a fish box too big. You might catch a lot of big fish. Upon further review, that's not really true, is it? Absolutely. You know what? These two boxes, we've got matching boxes here on both sides of the boat. 
They're 280 quarts a piece, which is plenty to hold a lot of big fish. You throw a 50 pound bag in each side here, you're good to go. You've got plenty of ice, you're yeah, exactly absolutely. right. And let me tell you something that I feel like up at the helm that Davis did just for me. I gotta show you this console. All right, let's have a look at it. Hold it, cowboy. <laughs> a Ricky deck. Wait a minute, you're eye to eye with me, what happened? <laughs> Knock it off. Listen, it's dangerous when you throttle up and you go through that little period where you can't see, okay? I can see over the bow right now like we're on a 19-foot bay boat. Check this out, Rick. This entire thing tips forward and all your systems, you're reaching them from out here it lays all the way down and it's very easy to get to all your wiring, electronics, your steering, etc. It's all right in there and it's real easy to lift it up. It also means that those connections are going to stand a much better chance of being maintained. Now Rick, you might not like to work on your electronics from inside the console, but if you do go in there, you're going to notice that there's six feet six inches of headroom. It's big enough to store lots of things and if you're taking a multi-day trip to the Bahamas or just pack a lot of stuff when you go on long range offshore trips, this console will handle the gear. Before we go further forward, George, old man seating, okay? <laughs> you love Big it. Big boat seating. You're darn right I love it. And it is really makes a difference in just the kind of run you're talking about where you're covering a lot of miles. Now, Rick, when it comes to the way you set up the bow on a center console, there's two different camps. One group really likes to have a totally open bow, while the other side wants forward seating. What does this boat look like to you? It looks like a very good mix of the two. Yeah, I mean, you've got seating for a bunch of people up here and very comfortable place to lounge, too. If you've got to take fish around here, this seating doesn't really get in the way of you walking a fish around the whole bow of the boat right. and clearing the outside of your tow rail. And look at all the below deck room you've got because they raised this platform just enough. Yeah, that box down there in this deck is a massive 640 quart box. I mean, if this isn't enough for you up here, that's definitely going to handle the rest of your needs. George, they didn't even waste the under gunnel space on this boat. They've got wide gunnels. That enables you to have rod racks on each side. Lock them up, put them up, they're out of the way. This is a fisherman's boat, and Buddy Davis has built it just that way. Hey, how about that scout? That's about all the luxury you could fit into a 21-foot center console. You want your hair blowing back and your sunglasses falling off the side of your face? Take a ride on that 260 glass stream. And the Buddy Davis 34, Rick, I mean, who doesn't love the Carolina style in a sporty outboard package? Hey, if you'd like any more information about the boats you've seen today or any boat you see on Florida Sportsman Best Boat, visit floridasportsman.com. Or we'll see you next week on another episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. When filming for Florida Sportsman Best Boat, the cast and crew docked and dined at Pirate's Cove Marina in Stewart, Florida. Family owned and operated, featuring 50 renovated rooms with an outstanding restaurant and a full service 50 slip marina.